Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yamini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Rafua Shalema, the complete and speedy recovery of Harav Amitai ben Shoshana, Leia Mincha Bas Kittel, and Shaul ben Brita. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Edward ben Ephraim, Shlomo ben Edward, and Yerachmir Daniel ben Gedalia. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. This week's Torah portion is Parsha's Fayikra. It is a calling, not a job. Our Parsha begins the third book of the Torah, Sefer Fayikra. The book of Vayikra primarily speaks about the work that the Kohanim and the Levim and the services they would do in the Mishkan and in the Bismigdash. The Parsha starts off with the first time that God speaks to Moshe Rabbeinu from within the Mishkan. He relates to Moshe the various types of karbanes, the various sacrifices that can be brought on the Mizbech, on the altar. And we begin with the Oile, an elective sacrifice that was burnt entirely and was solely for God. The Chatas, an offering that would atone for sins that were done unintentionally. The Shlomim, a voluntary sacrifice that was brought to thank God and was eaten by the donor, the Kohanim, and the Levim. The Ashem, an offering that was brought by the person who is unsure if they violated a Torah prohibition. However, a question comes to mind. The Parsha begins, Vayikra el Moshe vayidabra Hashem elav ma'oyel moid lemor. And God called to Moshe, and God spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, But why did Hashem first call Moshe and then speak to him? Normally, the Torah just writes Vayoymer Hashem el Moshe Lemor, and God spoke to Moshe, saying, Why did God call Moshe first? The Rabbeinu Bachayar of Bachi bin Asher, a famous Spanish commentary, gives several explanations. He quotes the Talmud in Yuma that learns from this Pasuk that students must wait until they are called upon to speak. They must heed and respect their teacher and only give their opinion if asked. The Rabbeinu B'chai explains that we ended last week's Torah portion with the presence of God finally resting upon the Mishkan. And therefore, out of respect and honor of God's physical presence in the Mishkan, Moshe waited until he was summoned. He held off and remained silent till God's divine presence called out his name. However, the Ranban, Rav Moshe ben Nachman, a leading Kabbalist and scholar, gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He writes that Hashem first called out to Moshe to give him a sense of purpose and a sense of belonging. Ever since God's holiness graced the Mishkan and the services began, Moshe remained outside and did not enter because he was not a Koyin. Only his brother Aaron and his four sons were permitted to serve and offer karbanes and offer sacrifices. The rest of the tribe of Levi were Levim that carried, prepared, and arranged all that was necessary for the sacrifices. And they also had their own service. They sang each day and stood guard around the Mishkan and Besmikdash. The Ramban explains that since he was not a Kohen, Moshe thought that his position no longer served a purpose. And therefore God first called out to Moshe before speaking to show him that he was responsible for teaching the Jewish nation. He was to educate and inform the Jewish people about the rituals of the Mishkan, what animals they can offer and bring as a carbon, and when they must bring a sacrifice. God called out to Moshe to prove to him that his job was not only necessary, but essential and fundamental to Jewish life. And his duties and role only grew with the creation of the Mishkan. For his calling is the pursuit of God himself, a permanent, limitless, and ever-evolving line of work like God's connection and love for us. In our daily life, as we continue to grow, develop, and progress, we should seek a calling that can develop with us. Not just a job that pays our bills, but a calling that imparts purpose and the understanding that we are vital to God's intention for the universe. There's a powerful quote by Viktor Frankl. Life is never made unbearable by circumstance, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening.